Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto and breaking down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, did we get clarity from SEC Chairman Gary Gensler as he talked out his testimony and statement in a sudden hearing committee that just took place roughly an hour ago? So we're going to take a look at uh, what is going on there. But first, I want to take a look at uh, uh, Kathy Wood and what she had to say as far as a price prediction for Bitcoin. And as it relates to regulation, we're going to go over the Senate hearing points. I want to say thanks to everyone who reached out to the senators. We're going to take a look at uh, Senator Toomey and Gensler and then get into the actual clarity issue. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with uh, Warren, a daddy comment. And what if as it relates to legislation for cryptocurrencies and digital assets? So go over all that stuff. But first, take a look at what's going on the market today, uh, which is quite odd, actually. Uh, I see that uh, the market cap is actually up. And uh, this is after some what I kind of would deem as like somewhat negative comments as far as regulation. But hey, market cap is up 2.11 trillion. And I think maybe if we if we really dig down into the into the depth of what just was uh, would take place, maybe there's actually good news. And uh, we'll get to that and everything else. So we've got uh, 2.1 trillion. Bitcoin is at uh, $46,700. I think it's looking pretty good. Ethereum 3300, Cardano 240. Uh, in the last 24 hours, though, we've had 5% bump for Bitcoin, almost the same with Ethereum. And everything else is up except for Cardano. Had a great run. Now the smart contracts are in. I think it's going to settle down to around the 250. And here we are. And then uh, XRP, watch out, dollar. Take to the dollar. Dollar 48. Uh, 13, 13% for Uniswap, it's kind of odd because SEC is uh, potentially investigating them, 12% for Tron. So yeah, it's a pretty good day for the market. So uh, we'll take it what it is. So uh, that is what's going on in the market per se. Let's just dig into what's going on uh, because it was a pretty big day. And it's this all really kind of is wrapped around something that Kathy Wood said. Uh, she was going through, uh, there's a uh, assault um, conference, uh, which is being taking place right now in New York City. And uh, what she was asked about was, first of all, Bitcoin price prediction, uh, what she is doing, and then how that all relates to legislation. So I'm just going to take a listen and you form your own opinion. So just check this out. Bitcoin. Five years from now, what's it worth? If, if we're right and uh, companies continue divers to diversify their cash into something like Bitcoin, and uh, institutions, institutional investors start allocating 5% of their funds towards, uh, uh, I'll just say Bitcoin for right now, because we did that, we framed it for Bitcoin, could be for other cryptos as well. Um, we believe that the, the price will be tenfold of where it is today. So instead of 45,000, over 500,000. Do regulators, especially U.S. regulators, need to buy into this in a major way? I would also say that we just saw it in the last week. Uh, Brian Armstrong runs Coinbase. You have stake in Coinbase. Mm -hmm. Has now gotten into a somewhat bitter feud yes. with the SEC over how uh, the ability to offer effectively a yield product mm -hmm. uh, on some of these cryptocurrencies, specifically yeah. Bitcoin, mm -hmm. will work. Yes. Uh I, th I think regulators, our working assumption from the beginning um, was that, and, and this was based on meeting with them, meeting regulators, both state and local and federal, was that no regulator wanted to be blamed from preventing the next big technology breakthrough to happen in the U.S. Uh, and that has proven true. Now we've got... Um, Chairman uh, Gary Gensler, I'm really happy he understands crypto and understands the merits of Bitcoin in particular. Uh, he is a regulator, though, and he is a hardcore regulator. What Coinbase did, I mean, I was shocked when I saw Wells Notice. Are you kidding? They haven't even released the product. The, like, what is this? And I think what that Wells Notice is doing, it's, it's a, a call out by regulators saying, we got to discuss this stuff because this is happening very quickly. And I think we are going to bring um, courts into the system. This happened in Canada. Uh, a company called 3IQ sued uh, the regulator there uh, and won in court. So they were able to issue Bitcoin ETFs and, and closed-end funds and Ether as well. So I am beginning to think 
that Coinbase doesn't mind this at all. And if you saw the stock reaction, it hardly budged. So a lot of things to dissect there. First of all, half a million Bitcoin. Sure, I'll take that. Uh, if that happens, I'm sure the uh, alts will do pretty darn well. And the last thing that you talked about, which is exactly what I was saying before, which we did a, a live stream a couple of days ago where I said there's only one option. And really it's going to come down to we just have to go to the courts, have them figure it out and uh, fight them, uh, fight back to the SEC. A lot of people say you can't fight the SEC. Mark Cuban did it. One in 2013, beat the SEC like a drum, like I always talked about. So uh, I, I think what Kathy Woods is saying here is in, entirely correct, unless there's another layer to this, which I'll get to at the at the very end. So first things first, uh, as far as like the Senate hearing points uh, themselves, here's what I here's here's the takeaway was this. First of all, um, if you ever watched a debate, especially a presidential debate, they suck. They're awful. <laughs> Nothing really gets done. But in these these hearings, it's very cordial. People are like, you know, I'm glad you can come in. Now let's work together. Let's let's find a resolution. I think that is the big thing that I took away from this one. Also, that nobody's 100% right. Even Gensler's not 100% right in this one. And that outcomes are shaped through dialogue, and that's why these things are brought forth. Uh, second thing was was this. There was three things that really brought up I time and again and again and again. First of all. Cryptocurrency was the very big thing that uh, really everybody wanted to talk about. The second one was that the, there, there's going to need to be climate change disclosures as far as global warming and everything else. And they got into that in detail. And uh, sure, you know, and which, which is weird to me that the SEC is going to be a part of that, but they're saying that it, it affects everything. And I'm like, that's a, that's a real change of position uh, and, as, as opposed to like the last two or three years. And lastly, uh, they talked about order flow book regulation uh, as it pertains to like Robinhood and things like that and uh, what is going on. But Genzer really just came out and says, I don't know if that's the issue or if the issue is that there's not enough competition for that part. And I thought that was interesting where he's more on the lines of we need more competition, which will kind of even everything out. So those were the points themselves. And then also I want to say say this, uh, in that, that video that we, we talked about, I stressed that I can't do this alone and I need some help. And I gave everybody their information as far as like uh, the senators. And uh, you must have done that because uh, every single question was about cryptocurrency. So the big takeaway was this. I want to say thanks to everybody who reached out to their senator, their congressman, or whoever else, their representative, and said, we need clarity for cryptocurrency because that was the main thing there. So uh, the two things in the Senate hearing was this. Every single senator, every single one, well, almost everyone, asked a question specifically about crypto. And then uh, because every single senator did that, that just shows you just how important crypto is becoming. This would never have happened in 2017. We would have lost our mind, minds if one senator would have even mentioned cryptocurrency. But in this one, that's all it was. So that is how big it's becoming. And that's why you're at the right place at the right time. Again, not financial uh, advice, just financial opinion. I, I, I reversed that yesterday. So uh, I can't give you any investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor, just some guy who likes to make videos about cryptocurrency. <laughs> so... That was that. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of it and just go into uh, the actual uh, hearing. So I'm going to play a couple, a couple of splices. It's two hours long. If you got nothing to do, uh, take a listen. It's very, it's, it's interesting how they come to their conclusions and things like that. Again, very cordial. But here are uh, four pieces of what I think are the most important thing. And the first thing here is you're going to see uh, Senator Toomey. Yes, Senator Toomey from. Uh, the legislation from before, uh, the, the last bill that we had talked about where everybody got together. And he was going to ask the question like, look, the SEC needs to do its job. And he asked Gensler directly, and this is the very first opening statement, which is, do you think that crypto is a security or not? You have to have clarity. Take a listen. In my view, the SEC's job is not to make retail investing more expensive or unpleasant or difficult. In America, adults investing their own money should be free to decide how to do so. Let me turn to cryptocurrency, um, which together with the blockchain technologies, this is a very, very important and very promising new technology. As you know, the cryptocurrencies are actively traded on many platforms. A really important question is whether a cryptocurrency is a security for regulatory purposes under the Howey or some other test. Now, based on your public statements, it's pretty clear that you believe that some are securities, but others are not. So I'm frustrated by the lack of helpful SEC public, public guidance explaining how you make this distinction. What makes some of them securities while others are not securities? Now, I understand that the SEC staff will privately provide feedback and analysis on whether a cryptocurrency 
is a security, but why is this analysis private? Why not publicly announce what characteristics make a cryptocurrency a security or not a security? In other words, how do you apply Howey and the Reeves test to these new products? Why wait to make the SEC's views known only when it swoops in with an enforcement action, in some cases, years after the product was launched? So first of all, for an opening statement, Toomey hit it uh, the nail right in the head. He goes, look, we're adults and uh, we decide what we're going to invest into. And the SEC's job is to uh, protect us against fraud, but it is our hard-earned money. So it's not like you are here to regulate us out of uh, the things that we want to do. That's not how this thing works. So I thought it was, it was a great opening statement. And of course, he's asking him point blank, why don't you make this public? Why don't you do the right things? Why don't you do your job? And then from there, you're going to go to, let's take a look, listen to uh, Gensler and his opening statement. And um, when he talks about these things, what he first says, I want you to remember the SEC's job, the SEC's job is to protect the consumer. And right here, are they protecting you? Or is it just like uh, Toomey just said, like, uh, you know, you guys are regulating after the fact, uh, which of course is uh, really going against uh, Ripple, XRP, and of course uh, Coinbase if they decide to go forward. So just take a listen to Gensler's uh, opening statement here. And now for the crypto, uh, because I know that you're all you know keenly interested. We just don't have, I believe, enough investor protection in crypto finance, the issuance of these tokens, the trading, and particularly the lending. Frankly, as I've said before, I think it's more like the Wild West. I've asked the SEC staff, working with our fellow regulators, the Commodity and Futures Trading Commission, the bank regulators, the Treasury as well, using our current authorities, how can we best bring investor protection to these markets? I stand willing also to work with this committee and other committees of Congress if you take up any legislative initiatives. And then third, issuer disclosure. You see, since the 1930s, we've had a basic bargain. Investors get to decide what risks they take. That's up to investors. But Congress said that it should be based on full and fair disclosure of the issuers. So right there, are they helping or are they hurting you? But what's interesting to me is that what Gensler said and what Toomey said are not too far off. They both agreed the same type of thing. He said it since 1933. It is up to the investor to decide how much risk they want to take, but there has to be adequate disclosure. So what Toomey said and what Gensler said, they are close. And if they can just hash it out and really come to a conclusion, I think it, it can actually work. But again, the question is, are they helping or hurting you? And then this next piece is going to give you clarity and me clarity uh, when I watch this. You're going to hear what Gensler des describes as what he believes most cryptocurrencies are. Take a listen. I think I know your position, uh, among other things, is that not all cryptocurrencies are inherently securities, right? That's true. There, there are a small number that aren't, but I think that, uh, the, as Chair Clayton said when he was in front of Congress, I think very many of these uh, okay. facts and circumstances are investment so, contracts. So right there, if you want clarity, you just got it. This is what Gensler believes by the definition as far as like the Howey test and the uh, uh, Reeves uh, test that was put out. He's saying, look, they are a security, they are an investment contract. Most, most, most cryptocurrencies are a security. So that is what it is. But then when we get into the weeds of it, it really comes down to why do you think that is? And it really comes down to the laws that have been put out and what's really going on. So what Toomey's going to do is he's going to try to, to really have him explain everything as it pertains to crypto, but more importantly into stable coins, because he even believes that stable coins are. And he's going to say, well, how do you do that? How do you know that? So just take a listen. So some are and some aren't is basically what you're saying. And I'm concerned that the SEC has not provided sufficient definition for, uh, and, and explained how it would apply the Howey test, which I think is the uh, court standard for determining when something is an investment contract. So for instance, stable coins do not have an inherent expectation of profit. They're just linked to the dollar. Now you might use them in an attempt to make a profit, but that's a, that's a second order activity. Is it your view that stable coins themselves can be securities? Um, I think it's, uh, Senator, they may well be securities. Um, as, as uh, Thurgood Marshall wrote in the Reeves opinion, um, in uh, defining the scope of the market that it, Congress, wished to uh, regulate, 
Congress painted a broad brush, and it actually included about 35 different things inside the definition of a security in okay, the 33 I've, Act. I, I've just got limited time here, so I acknowledge that. Um, here's my problem, though. I think what you just said was that they may be securities or that some are securities. Um, to me, a stable coin doesn't meet the second prong of the Howey test, that there has to be an expectation of profits from the investment. And so if it doesn't meet the Howey test, it looks to me like it's not a security. Now, maybe you've got a good argument for why some are and some aren't. My whole point is, I think we need to have clarity on this. I think you should publicly disclose this. Apparently, there are private conversations where you work with people who are proposing particular structures and you give them advice, or your staff gives them advice. I just think we ought to have that publicly, and we certainly shouldn't be taking enforcement action against somebody without having first provided that clarity. Well, um, Senator, this this Congress and uh, could change the laws, but the laws that we have right now have a very broad definition of security, including a note, including an investment contract and the like. And our, my predecessor, uh, Chair Clayton and others actually put out a lot of guidance with regard to the Howey. I, I just I just kind of push back a little bit on that. It, it is broad, but it's well defined. There is a very specific litany of the instruments that constitute securities, as you know this better than I do. Investment contract is one of them. And there is a court decision that lays out the prongs for what constitutes an investment contract. I'm just saying, as a layman who can read English, when I read those tests, stable coins don't seem to meet that test to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but if I can misinterpret this, I think others could too, and some clarity, public clarity, I think would be helpful. Um, I see the red light, but I agree with you that, that um, uh, some of these tokens have been deemed to be commodities. Many of them are securities, and the Supreme Court has weighed in a number of times. You, you noted the Howey test. I, we've talked about the Reeves test was in the 1990s as well, um, has weighed in, and I think that there's a fair amount of clarity over the years. So that is the whole thing. So there's a couple things to unpack here. First of all, when he's talking about, you know, the uh, Reeves test and the Howey test, I think Toomey held his feet to the fire adequately and says, you, it's broad, but it's defined. And you have to actually give us clarity, clarity, clarity as soon as possible, because you can't just take action and then, you know, have all this, these, these problems come about. And he's like, well, you know, this and that. But there was one thing that was interesting is that Gensler said, Look, he goes, you guys can change the laws, but these are the laws that we have in front of us. Maybe Gensler is just one of those guys who's like, you know what, this is what it states. This is what it, it says. I have to go by the law, just like how lawyers, you know, and uh, the legal processes, this is what it is. Maybe it's time for Congress, for Senate, for uh, the, you know, Supreme Court uh, to actually take a look at this and go, you know what, uh, this is what we should really need to actually define as as a as a security as it relates to cryptocurrency and digital assets and what it really takes because these Howey t the Howey test is in like the 30s the the Reeves opinion was in 1990. I mean this is so ancient. I, I think we need something totally new. But what we have right now is what it is. But uh, to me personally, when he talks about stable coins, I'm like really you can't even give him that. But anyhow, that is what it was for that. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But if you needed clarity, this is exactly where Gensler is going. Most are a security, and some have been deemed a commodity. Bitcoin, Ethereum being one of them. Hinman came out and gave that, uh, that public opinion in a speech that says that Ethereum is adequately decentralized. And then off you go. So uh, really, it just comes down to, are they going to stick with that? Because if that's the case, then you, you, you really have overlap. And, I don't want to go into the, the minutia, but that's your clarity right there. So that is it for, for that little piece. And then uh, lastly, I just want to go over just a couple of snippets, which I thought were pretty funny, uh, which comes down to this. Uh, Warren, Senator Warren came out and she had, she had a great point and she had a dumb point. And uh, not a dumb point, just goofy. And uh, the, the first point she said was this. She's like, well, if you're trying to protect investors and things go down 30% and all these uh, exchanges go down, well, how are we protecting them? Because they can't get out of their positions. And she named specifically Coinbase uh, for that. And I'm like, that's a pretty good point. Look, if you want to get out of your positions and all of a sudden the exchange just goes down again, uh, there should be something that some type of, of 
of adequate procedure where you can actually get into your exchange so you can actually get out of a position. Now, I understand that it's just, it's the free market and things like that, but it was a good point. Like, well, how are you going to do that? And then she started talking about DEXs and, and the Ethereum price. And we all know the gas fees, but it, that, that's neither here nor there. One of the other things that she talked about, which I thought was kind of goofy, was she said this, she goes, she talks about in financial inclusion. Uh, no, but uh, she said that the real thing that was bad was her point about the volatility and how 10 to 30% swings are just awful for the average retail investor. And it just goes down to what Toomey and what uh, Ginsler talked about. They go, look, you're welcome to take as much risk as you possibly can because that is up to you. You're an adult and you're an American. So go ahead and do whatever you want to do or wherever you're from. I mean, in America, that's what, we, that's what it is. So if she's going to talk about like, we need pr protection from people who just don't know how to invest, that's not the point. The point is people can take that. The big thing is to protect them against fraud. And that I think is where uh, there was a disconnect. And then uh, next to last, I'm going to play this clip, which was a funny, this is, I forgot the senator's name, but he's talking about uh, the, the corporations and everything else that, that Gensler oversees. And, he's, and he just asked him a very basic question. Take a listen. But as to the, to the people and the companies that you regulate as chairman of the SEC, do you consider yourself to be their daddy? No, no. <laughs> do you consider them to be your daddy? Fantastic question, question of the day. That's pretty good. And then lastly, I'm just gonna sum it up with this. The reason why the internet wasn't stifled was because of legislation, was because of clarity. And that was section, two, section 230, where it states, it was pretty much just sums up like this. Passed in 1996, says an interactive computer service can't be treated website as the publisher or speaker of third-party content. This protects websites from lawsuits if a user posts something illegal, although there's exceptions. And really it came down to, this is what allowed the internet to kind of flourish because you can't have somebody come in there and, and posting things that, that uh, uh, would incriminate the website for which it was posted on. Everybody was scared about that. And they said, no, 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 you're not gonna be held responsible for that. And that is what allowed the internet to be what it is today. So the whole thing is this, I think that there has to be a little more clarity and I think we have to move forward. There's two other options. Uh, there's two options I see now. One is we just go to court and we battle it out. Look, Mark Cuban's able to beat the SEC. They're not unbeatable for Pete's sakes. And the next thing is unless Congress comes together and changes the laws in some way and, and, and to determine what, what a security is, uh, there's, this is what he's left with and this is where he's going to go. The only other way that I can see it, and this is a long shot, is if they just say, okay, we're going to determine what a security is, what a commodity is, and exactly what a currency is as relates to cryptocurrency and digital assets. And from this point forward, that is what it is and no harm, no foul. So everybody before you are left off the hook, but you have to register now. This is the only thing that would that, that would make sense to me because you have 6,000 different ones. If they take a hard line and say, okay, guess what? Eight, eight, 90% of cryptocurrencies are securities. You all sold uh, unregistered securities. We're gonna find every single project out there and we're gonna find all the exchanges. You can do that. But, and I know people will say, well, that's what all they want, the money. They, they just want the money. Yeah, but you know what You know what kind of position that would put America in? That would put us so far back behind every other superpower that is out there. It would leave us, it would almost be like banning electricity. And that's how detrimental that would be. So that's how I see things. Anyhow, but that's it for today. And I know it was a long one, but there was a lot of great information. This is where, this is where we're at. So. If you found value in the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. We do things like this every single day, uh, up-to-date stuff. And that is it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.